where are we off to this morning? This morning we are heading up the A3 because we are going to go to Selborne. We want to go and visit the Gilbert White House. So who is Gilbert White and what is his house? He was a very famous naturalist and um, he painted, he drew really, drew the wildlife around him. Um, and meticulously, meticulously made notes. Okay, so proper observations. And as far as we're all concerned, you know, 1700s, it was a fabulous record. Yes. Um, Isn't it beautiful? Nice it's it's one of those it? late summer, still not too hot, beautiful yeah, days at the moment. Nice. Give it half an hour and who knows? It'll all change. <laughs> Knowing our luck, we will get the cameras out and the heavens will open. It's threatening us with showers today, so of course as soon as we sit down in gods and paint, no doubt, it will just say, oh, 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 oh there they are, dush. So yes, <laughs> How's it going? Know that one. How's yes. it going? Dush. <laughs> dush. So Selborne's quite interesting because it sits at the base of the hangars. What are the hangars? You've heard me talk about this before. The hangars are the tree-covered hills in Hampshire, so our particular name for this. And hangars because literally the trees hang over, you know, over the hillsides. Okay. And um, there's a very famous walkway behind the house that's called the zigzag. And um, I've done it in my youth, in my 30s, and even that made me puff and pant. But I felt better about it because halfway up the zigzag, we came across my doctor and his family, and he was younger than me, and he was puffing and panting and red face like it. He was colouring Denise's top. So um, that made me feel a lot better. But of course, you can imagine from the top of the hangars, the view down into Selborne is quite stunning. And I'm not going up there and bloody painting it. <laughs> Dragging, sure? all, dragging all my stuff up there. I'm not doing it. Are you dragging even your backside up there? No, I'm not all in my bum up there, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. My village is quite interesting actually because um, we're very low and we have oast houses and the oast houses are not there for hops and for, um, you know, agriculture. They were there because the clay, the neat clay, was taken out to make bricks and the oast houses were used to dry the bricks. And this is why we've got such a dip because that was the whole where the clay came from. That is very interesting and I didn't know that. Do you know what we're doing right now? We're driving up a hill. We don't have these. In oh, no, Norfolk. not in Norfolk. <laughs> no, you're going up the hangers now. Yeah, I know, but it's it's not. A Norfolk hill isn't quite like this. <laughs> Norfolk hill, you, you wouldn't even notice that you were climbing it. To be honest, climbing it—that's a misnomer, isn't it? That's you would. Right word. You would. There would are. Some, we live on a hill. You do. Yes. You never driven up our drive. It's uphill. Yes. <laughs> it's a Norfolk hill we live on. We've actually got a well in the garden that we found. It wasn't on the digs, we didn't know it was there. And the well, because the house is at the top of the hill, and the well is really deep because it's the only way to get to the water table. You were talking at one stage of covering that over with glass. Yeah, we are going to, but that would be a lovely idea. Yeah, but pre-COVID it was about fifteen hundred quid, and it's about four grand now. That's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Couldn't do it yourselves in any way, shape, or form. No, not. because you need special tempered glass, and no, it's it's not worth. No. No, I want somebody who knows what they're doing to do that. Yeah, you wouldn't really want to walk on it and fall through it, would you? No. That happened to my neighbour actually, she was in her back garden years ago and they used to have um, a, a, a tank 
underneath the garden we have from days gone by when mm -hmm. that's where our, our waste water went and um, she fell in the septic tank and she fell through it went through it and landed up in this great big pit in her garden and um, it was fortunate because a neighbour heard her shouting and was able to come and um, get her out. But a bit scary. It is a bit scary. Mm. So we're just coming into Selborne now and um, we'll show you the house as soon as we've arrived. Many years ago, probably about 25 years ago, I came here for a day to do a course on Old English Roses. Lovely. And it was with the gardener who walked us around the garden, showed us the roses, taught us how to um, propagate them, how to care for them. And then in the afternoon after lunch in the local pub, he took us back out. Sorry, a bit bumpy there, just trying to avoid a head on. <laughs> it's a tiny rush. And he took us back out into the garden and he said, now prune my roses. Wow. So he gave us the, the run of the garden and he said, if you want to take any cuttings home and you want to use them to propagate the roses. Yes. So for years and years, I had some Gilbert White Old English roses in my garden. Oh, how beautiful. We are here. And you know what? It's not raining. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's no wind. Because in the past, we've really been troubled with the wind, haven't we? <laughs> we've always been troubled by wind. We need some tablets for that. <laughs> I wish. I wish. <laughs> that's all it oh, took. Oh, dear, I dear. So that's yes. lovely. We're here. Come and see what we've got. Let's go and find out what's here. Oh, isn't that just glorious? Now, do they say, is it the Hawthorne that they say that if it's absolutely smothered in berries like that, that it's a portent of a hard winter? Yeah, yes, so they say. Yeah. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. Do you know what I think it is? It's a portent of a good growing season. I think that's true. So if you've had a good yes. summer that's right for that plant, it'll yes. have plenty of berries on it. Yeah. Um, which means that if we do have a hard winter, the more birds, birds will got, survive. Yes, yeah. yeah. Now this is something that's interesting. Have you noticed after the really hard winter that we had last year that the poor old horse chestnut trees aren't quite as badly affected as they have been with this leaf miner? And it comes in, for those foreign visitors amongst you, the leaf miner, the little moth lays its eggs and the miner gets into the leaf and eats the green between the um, veins and it's just destroying all of our poor old horse chestnuts. And actually, if I look up high, I don't know whether you can see it here, but the air is full of all the little moths buzzing around. There you can see them. Amazing. So that, they're the culprits. Just walking along the path to come in and just the view of the back of the house is beautiful. What a lovely place. Mm. So we've come in, we've paid our dues. And the first thing we find is a rather fabulous little gift shop. Beautiful stuff. The Reverend Gilbert White lived from 1720 to 1793 and he absolutely loved Selborne, its landscape and all of its wildlife. He lived at a time when knowledge was expanding in many, many different directions and for him, this meant a fascination with landscape, weather and all forms of plant and wildlife. He constantly observed the world around him, identifying new species, discovering how they lived and whether birds migrated. He wrote to leading naturalists about what he'd observed, and eventually he published the letters as The Natural History of Selborne, which is still available today. It's loved by generations of those with a similar passion for the English countryside. And realistically, today, when we look back, he taught us an awful lot about different things, things that hadn't been observed, hadn't been noticed up until this point.
he was really important to any botanist and naturalist indeed. Gilbert's lifelong friend John Mulso said, you're more able to see with your own eyes than any man I know. Shall I go and stand next to him? Yeah, I don't think he bites. I don't think he bites. If this is a true representation, he was a diddy little man. But they were, weren't they, in the 16 and 1700s? I mean, four feet something was the, na you know, normal However, size. Do you remember when we were at, the, at Anne Hathaway's cottage? Yes. We thought all the beds were tiny because people were tiny, and it wasn't. Uh, the beds were tiny because you, people used to sleep sitting up because they felt that if you laid down, then you were halfway between life and death and the spirits could come and take you in your sleep. Ooh! Creepy. He never had a portrait painted, and there is only a little pencil, a pen sketch drawing to know what he looked like. But they did know he was five foot three, so he really was quite, was quite diddy, and he was slight, and he was referred to as upright and prim. Oh, isn't that nice? So how tall are you? For a, I'm for five four and a half, so I think this is okay. probably even smaller than he actually was because okay. I'm not that much taller than him, but. Yes, bless him, but he was slight, dainty, and prim. And prim. <laughs> None of the things that apply to me. No, I couldn't <laughs> say that either, really. <laughs> Even the floor is stunning. It's a parquet flooring, isn't it? Oh yes. Look at the pattern on it, then. How lovely. Imagine sitting here, looking, looking out there. over that fabulous garden. Yes, please. Yeah, even in the winter with a roaring fire going, you'd be all right, wouldn't you? Yeah. A fabulous white family tree up here and there's some very interesting characters so Thomas White that we were just looking at who was Gilbert White's brother he inherited the estate of his mother's uncle all very complicated but I'm really interested in this chap Jack John White was known as Gibraltar Jack oh so I want to know more about that one um, so that would have been Gilbert White's nephew. So that's an interesting one. So John White. So yeah, Gibraltar Jack is John, no, also known as John White, would have been Gilbert's nephew. He's here. Ooh. So this is the brother. This is the niece. When you say the brother... He's one of his brothers, so this is Thomas White. Okay, I'm just going to tell you there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of them. What? So there are eleven siblings, and oddly, very oddly, three of them are called Anne White. So I take That's it, not helpful. <laughs> I take it the two younger ones didn't survive. They didn't, okay. they didn't live more than a year or so. So there was another Anne White later on that managed to get okay. it through. <laughs> so we're looking for John White. Well, there's a John White here. I wonder if that's Gibraltar Jack. So the, this is one of his nieces then. Yes. And he, one of his brothers. So this is Thomas White. And then if we come over into this corner, this is John White. Is this Gibraltar Jack? Well, um, he had been sent down from Oxford for disorderly conduct, probably gambling, and he helped Gilbert build the zigzag path up the hangars. Oh, did he? About. Um, his debts increased and he was forced abroad to avoid scandal. And he served as an army chaplain in Gibraltar, so therefore that's yeah, the Gibraltar, Gibraltar Jack. Jack. Um, and he died in 1793. 
got a twinkle in his eye though. Sounds like a real lad. <laughs> Mary, or Molly White, was Thomas's eldest child, and she was brought up in South Lambeth in London. From the age of 15, she was taught in Selborne by the vicar's wife. Molly White thrives well at Selborne and grows tall, fair and handsome and is a fine girl, Gilbert wrote in 1774. Molly was well read and helped with research for the natural history. She was nicknamed Sister Antiquary on account of her interest in medieval history. Molly was Gilbert's favourite niece and in April 1778 he wrote, When you can spare time from the cares of housekeeping, and want to relax your mind, I should be glad to hear from you and shall rejoice in your communications. This is one of the eight entertainments for the, our younger visitors. Of course I'm gonna have a go. Um, what colour am I gonna choose, just for you? Oh, orange. So, what am I gonna do? Let's have a little look. I need to put my glasses on for this. There's some trees. Let's see what the trees come out as. So this is rubbing, isn't it? Yes. So we've got some trees. Oh, bit, fab. Bit random, but let's let's put the house in amongst the trees. That's fabulous. So look, we've got a house. Oh, well, that's all right, isn't it? And we it? have trees. I think um, we need some sheep. We need some sheep sheep. Uh, let's get it, um, yellow sheeps, we have. Yellow sheeps? Yeah, let's get it. Woo! Nearly <laughs> <laughs> split your difference there. <laughs> Chosen a colour that stands out better right, on, the, on the camera. Look, okay, so you, you we oh, need to go back to orange. Fussy director now. Look, look we have, oh yes, that's all right. Orange it? sheep, and with the sheep we need a cow. Okay. So I'm going to stick with the orange, so I don't get told off by the crew. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have sheep and cows. Oh yeah, cool. Um, now there's a rather delightful horse and rider. So let's pop her. Oh, this is smashing for the kids, isn't it? For the kids? For the kids. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Yeah. Yep, lovely. There we are. We have a, mento, a memento of the day. Should we have a hang glider randomly? Random hang glider? Well, he's room in the sky. Coming into land. Bada boom, bada bing. And there we have our Selborne picture. We do love a kitchen, don't we? Oh, God, a kitchen. It's quite a simple kitchen, but lovely. Okay. What have we found? We have an extract from Gilbert White's account book. Right. And expenses in housekeeping at Selborne from the death of my father, October 1758. Oysters, two shillings. No, that's not two shillings, that's two pence. Two D is two pence, isn't it? Yes. Uh, a petticoat for Tull's naked wench. Oh, I say. <laughs> <laughs> two shillings and sixpence. Oh, I say. Half a pound of gunpowder. Oh, <laughs> Oh, the meat must have been tough then. <laughs> Going with the ladies to a puppet show. Oh, <laughs> one shilling and sixpence. I had six gallons of wine from Fairham. They had a good old Oh, I up. say, yes. And that was one pound thirteen shillings of no pence. Don't forget, though, they didn't drink water. No, it was because it was you, you had to drink poisonous. alcohol um, because it killed the bugs in yeah. the yeah. It was the only way to be safe. Wasn't yes, it? six. Uh, two Westmoreland hams, six pounds of sturgeon from London. That was only eight shillings for six pounds of oh, sturgeon from London. A lobster, that was a shilling. Oh. And how much was a shilling, Sharon? 5p. Yeah. Um, a feather topped grizzle wig from London. <laughs> <laughs> I say. <laughs> what the hell is a feather topped grizzle wig? You have to Google that. <laughs> that was two pounds, five shillings. Okay. That was. 
Yes. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money for a feather top grizzly wig. <laughs> Goodness. Lost. Oh, it cost him a shilling because he lost at cards. He was obviously playing cards with somebody. This is a reference gambling. I know. Two pounds of common candles. Right. 11 pence. Uh, gave Black Jack, who broke his leg, a shilling. Aww. Uh, and he did a mouse trap and two oranges, which oh. was nine pence. Oh, the mice obviously eat well around here. <laughs> I, I think we need to look up what a grizzle wig is. So do I. Huh? Brilliant. There are some great quotes about Al Gilbert. Charles Darwin said, From reading White Selborne, I remember wondering why every gentleman did not become an ornithologist. And Gerald Durrell later on said, Gilbert White simply observed nature with a sharp eye and wrote about it lovingly. How true is that? It seems strange now, with all of our knowledge, to realise that Gilbert White was the first person to record that Swifts made him flight. This was not observed again until the 1930s. He was absolutely fascinated by the way a female Swift protects her chicks. He said, The Dan sat in the nest, but so strongly was she affected by natural affection for her brood that regardless of her own safety... She would not sit, but lay sullenly with them, permitting herself to be taken in hand. We read somewhere further down the corridor that when somebody died, they left him a tortoise. Seriously? Well, mind you, I suppose tortoises live, don't they, for a hundred years sometimes. So this is, this is the story about Timothy the tortoise. And it says, 21st of April, 1780, the old Sussex tortoise that I have mentioned to you so often is become my property. I dug it out of its winter dormitory in March last when it was big enough awakened to express its resentments by hissing and packing it in a box with earth carried it 80 miles in post chaises. When his aunt Rebecca died in 1780, Gilbert White was delighted to inherit her daughter's Thomas, who was then thought to be about 45 years old then and it's unlikely that Timothy was as delighted to become the subject of a series of experiments <laughs> devised by Gilbert to enlarge, in quotes, to enlarge my observations on its mode of life and propensities. Within weeks of arriving in Selborne, Gilbert had plunged Timothy into a tub of water. <laughs> he seemed quite out of his element, much dismayed. I'm not surprised. Adding, this species seems not to be amphibious at all. <laughs> when Gilbert shouted at Timothy through a speaking trumpet, <laughs> the reptile did not seem to regard the noise. In hot weather, Timothy was always a great bustle and often got lost in the meadows beyond the garden. And if you could see the pictures of the outside, you'd understand that. Gilbert supposed that he was searching for beautiful females <laughs> who might inhabit those vast spaces. Can you imagine it? We know now that Timothy was female and was oh. not in Virginia, as Gilbert believed, but in North Africa. So who knew? Who knew? I must read this to you because I hope it will make you laugh. Gilbert wrote this on behalf of Timothy, speaking as Timothy, so to speak. It says... From the border under the wall, August 31st, 1784. In my present situation, I enjoy many advantages, such as the range of an extensive garden affording a variety of sun and shade, and abounding in lettuce, poppies and kidney beans, and many other salubrious and delectable herbs and plants, and especially with a great choice of delicate gooseberries. But still... At times, I miss my good old mistress, whose grave and regular deportment suited best with my disposition. For you must know that my master is what they call a naturalist, and much visited by people of that turn, who often put him on whimsical experiments, such as feeling my pulse, and putting me in a tub of water to try if I can swim, etc. And twice in the year, I'm carried to the grocer to be weighed. That may be seen how much I am wasted during the months of my abstinence. 
and how much I gain by feasting in the summer. Upon these occasions I am placed in the scale on my back where I sprawl about to the great diversion of the shopkeeper's children. Your sorrowful reptile, Timothy. So what do we have here? I've found the original book. This is the original manuscript and it was acquired by the museum in 1980 and of course it's its greatest treasure. God, can you imagine Gilbert White's hands touched this and wrote this? This kind of history does it for me. It, it does, it, I, it sets I, you it, off, doesn't it? Yes, it gives so, me gooses and makes me all sort of... <laughs> and this page is written, it says... It's a letter, letter 10, and it's Selborne, August the 1st, 1778. And this is a bit about the owls, because it says, a neighbour of mine who is said to have a nice car. Not car, surely. Car? How can it be a car can in it... 17... Ear? Ear! Ear! <laughs> he needs to touch up on his handwriting. <laughs> it's all the beautiful serifs and the squirrels and the what yes. have you. Who said to have a nice ear remarks that the owls about this village hoot in three different keys in G flat or F sharp in B flat and and, and A flat. Who speechless <laughs> <laughs> speechless Oh dear oh dear do these different notes um, proceed from different species or only from various individuals. So he's asking himself questions about the, the animals and how and why and querying whether that's the same across the country because they have since discovered, now here's something for you, not so recently, but in recent years, they have discovered that birds in different parts of the country actually have accents. And a, and a, a real ornithologist will know which part of the country a bird comes from. How about that? Wow. Mind blown. Mm. The house was on the market in the 1950s and an appeal was issued in the Times for funds to pay to turn it into a museum to Gilbert White. Well, the appeal was seen by Robert Oates. Now, he was a cousin of the Captain Oates who went off with Scott to the Antarctic. That sort of really ill-fated expedition and he agreed to fund the museum if there would be a space for his extensive Oates collection so the three of them now kind of share this space you have Gilbert White and uh, we've got Frank's exhibition there who was the nephew of this particular Oates and of course you've got the Antarctic expedition there as well Frank was an ornithologist and in his short lifetime he discovered species of birds that we no longer have today in our world, sadly. But he painted them and he recorded them. He was a halfway decent artist, um, it has to be said. If you look at the lovely pictures and paintings, they're a treasure for us today. But he'd been a poorly child and a poorly young man. Um, he had issues with his lungs. And sadly, he caught a fever and he died at the tender age of 35. No age, really. I see the treetops tipped with green and hear the thrush's voice telling me of old times and asking me why I keep house. And I've no doubt spring is here. So I want to be out again and greet her as an old friend. <laughs> Walking along just now, and what did you just do? Oh, walk straight through a cobweb, and you know it always hits you in the face. My husband says that's because, of course, that's the bit that you feel. But when it gums all your eyelashes together, it's not much fun, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Gilbert. Hello. 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 Hello.
We've stopped again, haven't we, Sharon? Mm. For coffee, biscuits. And biscuits. So here we are at the ha ha. Why is it called a ha ha? It, it derives from the French and it's a bit of a joke on the exclamation that people would have made when they came across it, saw it and discovered it and ha! Oh! Ha! So, <laughs> if you look down here, the other side of where I'm standing, we have a ditch. There's a ditch and then the ground rises again. And the whole idea was that it's too wide for a deer to be able to jump across it. And it keeps the deer out of your garden, of course. It also means that your average bunny rabbit and those darling ickle fuffy moles can't get into your garden because they go and eat all your lovely plants. And if you're uh, somebody like this, who's traveling around the world to collect specimens, and have them in the garden to look beautiful. You don't want everybody else eating them, do you? Not at all, not at all. Of course, it stops animals coming into the garden. How does it do that? The width is longer, wider than a spring from a deer. So the deer can't jump from the other high side of the ditch. There's a ditch here. So they can't jump from the ditch across. And of course, rabbits stand no chance of digging through and underneath. And it just means that everything stays exactly where it ought to be without too much intervention. And behind us, we have this magnificent, rather sad, old looking oak. And it says on the plaque that it was planted in 1730. So that's been here a while. And it appears in a painting from 1770, apparently. But the ha-has were used to keep the wildlife out, but without an interrupted, with an view. uninterrupted view yes, from your yeah. property. And whilst we're in this spot, if you look beyond the gardens, look up the hillside, and these are the hangers that I was talking about earlier, and you can understand why they're called hangers. Look at the way the foliage is dripping, almost dripping down the hillside. Hampshire hangers. Look at this beautiful little part of the herb garden, isn't it delightful? Look at the grapes. I know. I'm going to go and have a, look, a closer look at those in a minute. I think we might have to sit here and do a painting at some point. Yes, please. And look how beautiful the little players are. What did you just say about having wind, my darling? <laughs> <laughs> I said it's nice to be here and not have the wind blowing all the plants all over the yes. place so that you can't take a photograph. You and I in the past, one of us has had to delicately hold the thing out of shot <laughs> to hold it still. Have you seen these rose hips? Look, they've got prickles on them. I've never ever seen anything like that before. They are so lush and round. They look like they're made of jelly. They look like plums. Yeah, just beautiful. Can you get really close and get all the, the furry bits on it? Oh, it's so exciting. Never seen anything like that before.
at this fabulous old greenhouse and we have the orchard walnut tree above us got fruit on it too can't see any at the minute yeah, look over here see the little round balls oh yes like yes chestnuts. yeah i see those and then we've got this over here i think i don't know i think that might be a meddler and do you think it's an no, apple? Has it got the tufty bit on it? Oh, that's yeah, a medlar through there. That's what I'm looking at. Oh, I'm looking at this one. No, not oh, the one duh. right in front of me. The one that, the one that I've zoomed, yeah, yeah. the one that I've zoomed in on. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, that's a medlar. That, looks like that a is a medlar. Yeah. Now that's a funny fruit, isn't it? It's, it's better weird. eaten after frost when it's mushy. Yeah, and it makes fabulous jam. Does it? Yeah. We've just glimpsed through the trees. There's this beautiful statue, you say, of Gilbert White himself, with a mm. bird on his hand, sat in the gardens. So when we get around there, we'll have another look at him. But we just had to stop and have a sneaky peek from the back. I want to go and sit next to him. Oh. Here we are. Gilbert White's house. Very complicated house. It is too. It is. And we're, yeah, we're, we're cheating. I'm cheating. You might not be cheating. Why? Cheating. How are we cheating? Well, I'm still debating as to which way around to put this. Um, the hollyhocks have just gone over and they were so beautiful. There's still the odd flower left on them. So I'm going to add some more flowers. And That's the roses a good idea. have gone over. So I think I might, you know, some of the roses are still here, but some have gone over. So, yeah. Hmm. I don't quite know how much to put in. I'm going to add and, add and subtract a few things, I have to say. Yes. Because there's um, quite a bit going on here in this particular building. I'm zooming in a little bit. And I don't think I want it all. No, I'm zooming in a bit. I don't want the whole building. Oh, I wish I had a photograph and a bit of trace down. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. You don't, because that's not the joy of painting outside. I really zoomed in on a little bit of it, and I don't know if that's good or not. Well, I think I've landed up with more than I anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're doing more of the building. Than I know, you. shut up, don't mention it. <laughs> <laughs> don't mention the buildings. Yes, don't mention the buildings. Okay, I've done all my drawing. What? Help! I've done all my drawing. Help! It doesn't mean to say I've drawn everything I need to draw. <laughs> I've just done all my drawing. <laughs> yeah, I need... There are some seriously steep angles on this roof. There aren't are some there? seriously steep. Oh, ye gods, we know she's busy. The bench is moving. Oh, oh man, she's really into this. I'm, I'm at it again. I'm so she's sorry. She's really into this. Am I rocking your world? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I try and be more delicate? No, 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 no. It's absolutely super it fine. Doesn't suit me to be delicate. Because if it all goes wrong, I can blame you. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. If it all goes right, you can blame me too. Oh man. Finished. No, stop it. It's not fair. You're no so unfair. No, I, actually, I like the synthetic brushes. I find that the proper sables are a bit bendy and soft. So I, you like like the I like the resistance you get yeah, from the yeah, synthetic. Yeah. Oh, no, you see, it's funny, isn't it? Horses for courses, because yeah. I don't. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. There isn't a right or wrong. No, when artists come along to students and say, oh, you don't want to be doing it like that, you, that, you ought to be doing it like this, it's not it's not fair, business. really, is it? No. No. It's not fair. Oh, I've oh, got a little bag of salt in here. Look at me. You have. Well Look done. at me. Go me. Go me. Now I've got mixed media because I've got grass stains on my picture. <laughs> I wonder what you were going to say there. Glass oh stains on me. Now, <laughs> what colour do we paint the sky today? I've done it green because I've just put a tree behind it. Green the, sky? Well, I've got a tree behind the house and I can't actually see much beyond that. Oh, so. I see. Well, I've made up a nice muddy blue. 
<laughs> so it's just how I see it today. Well, at the moment it is, isn't it? It certainly is. I'm going to come in here and splish splash it about a bit. So we've been talking today about the various places that we're planning on going yes, to. Yes. So if there is somewhere that you as viewers would oh. love us to go and paint, we would love to hear from you. Yes, please. Yes. We can't do them all, but we'll... But we'd we'll have a jolly good go, wouldn't we? Yeah. Yes. I don't know what I'm doing. Do you know Welcome what you're doing? To my world. I ain't got a clue. Do you need to have a clue? Oh, what was the song? We just haven't got a clue what to do. Oh my God. That, you that really was, that sweet? was. Sweet? Yes, sweet. yes, it was sweet. Yes. Ballroom Blitz. <laughs> Dave somebody. Just haven't got a clue what to do. I loved it. So the plan is, if I get the colour in, yeah. I can go away and draw over it. Yes. At a later date if we if rain stops play, you know. Which it's entirely likely to do. It may well do. It's yeah. definitely trying. <laughs> trying is the word you're looking for, maybe. It's very trying. Oh dear. I think we've even upset the blackbird. That could be a wren. That sounds like a wren's panic signal, doesn't it? It's cross, whatever it is. Mm. I'm quite used to that noise down the garden when the cats are down there. Oh, okay. You've either got to go yeah. full botanical. Yeah, yeah. Or, or just go proper, crazy. Yes. Yeah. Crazy? You're saying my painting is crazy? I think Sometimes, yes. Yes, I think it's highly appropriate. Got a problem with that? No. <laughs> As I often say, I resemble that remark. <laughs> <laughs> trying to keep your hands off it, isn't it? While, while you're working it, so that you don't land up making a right old dog's dinner of it. What were you going to say? <laughs> yes, I know. I just, yes. <laughs> yes, you, you really did. Yes. We're human folks. Yes. I'm glad we didn't sit over there. There's some the he's making now. Tell me about it. Got an angle grinder. We chose a really beautiful spot yeah. in this garden. Yeah. We looked around the whole garden and we yeah. chose our spot. Lovely. Um, and it had benches and it was pretty and it was lovely. Herb garden. And nobody was in there. And so we went and got our painted stuff, came back, and he's there mixing cement and he's now got an angle grinder over there. Yeah. It's just not on. So aren't we glad we didn't get involved in that? You can't choose your spots and <sighs> expect it to still happen. So unfair. So unfair. I'm entitled. <laughs> <laughs> and if he wants to do his angle grinding, what do we say? Just let it be. Just let him. <laughs> yeah. We've been taking a few life lessons, you know, about don't let it wind you up, just let it. it so is. don't gnash your teeth. It is what it is. I'm still going to go and choke that pigeon in a minute if he keeps it up. Nice in a pie. Well, if you could have told me it was a white rose before I painted all my Well, it, loose it's background. that pale pink stuff, you know. <laughs> Don't blame me. I'm blaming you for everything. Oh dear. Is that alright? No. Oh. No, I might cry. Oh dear, what was that? What, that was your, your stuff just Oh, have you just out. thrown some of my stuff on the yes, floor? Yes, I have. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Don't look at that. <laughs> Don't look at me in that tone of voice. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it, miss. <laughs> you can't get the start off these days. <laughs> oh dear. I've done it wrong. <laughs> So what sort of brushes, I know then they're a nylon brush, but what what sort of brush are you favouring there? I've got various different sorts. Mm -hmm. um, the one I'm currently using is a Jackson's synthetic. Oh yeah. I think that's their synthetic sable, which I quite like. Okay. Because yeah. it's more like a sable, but it's still got the resistance that you get from a, yep. 
a proper brush. The other ones I was using that I've messed up and I need to sort out are my Pebio brushes. Okay. Which I also quite like. Um, I quite like Jackson's brushes, they're synthetics. I don't know if you've ever tried them. Um, I've got a few at home, yes. Odds and ends, you know. Yeah, so which ones do you prefer? Um, well, at the moment, I'm use these are synthetic. Yeah. They're the, um, this lot's from the SAA. Okay. Um, but they are the traveler's brush. So you can kind of, Oh, that, that's lovely, you know, isn't it? I, I, know I you, like that, that set. You've those a lot, haven't you? Um, and you can buy replacements for them too. So when, you know, the time comes that the brush is a little bit tired, yeah. I'd be able to go and just uh, buy myself. A replacement, a, which a is quite brush, nice. Don't have yeah, to replace the yeah, yeah. The kit and the yeah. case and everything else. Yeah, because yeah. you don't want to do that all the time, do you? Wait. When I was doing the unicorn book, I can remember we would, a husband and I were driving somewhere, and um, we drove past a field full of horses, and I said to him, oh, "Look at those unicorns!" And he looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. looked at me, and he said to me, "God, you're nuts, aren't you?" And I said to him, no, it's just the fact that you're an unbeliever, so therefore you can't see them. Yeah. I know I'm right, so it's okay. Yeah, doesn't matter, does it? Well, somebody's happy over there. They're the right old sing song, aren't they? Now, you know, we moved so that we weren't next to that man doing his building work. <laughs> He appears to have come round the garden. <laughs> He's clanking away in the background. Couldn't have a nice quiet plastic uh, watering <laughs> nice. down, could he? <laughs> oh, too nice much to ask for. Noisy metal ones. Oh, now he's off with his angle grinder. <laughs> you really think people had lives, wouldn't you? <laughs> now I have this kind of misty void underneath my arch like you did. Yes. So what are you going to do with uh, well, your I'm, misty void? I'm going, yeah. I've I'm, darkened my misty void. <laughs> that sounds like a, a euphemism. It does. It sounds very dodgy, doesn't it? Let's be honest. I've darkened my misty void. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I've got you don't want to go saying that in the wrong company, do you? Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, yeah. <gasps> that and this back. There's a really sharp 90 degree corner out there, and if you come round it too fast and too wide, you're in trouble. Oh yeah. dear. At least a curb strike. Yes. Sounded like it, didn't it? Yeah. Oh dear, do you think we're going to get back to the car before it rains? <laughs> Not sure. That's what I want to do. I got my... the salt out and I never used it. <laughs> Silly mare. Oh no. <laughs> and we're all so just whenever we're ready. No. No, you only get that and that now we get the car out. Bit off, bit off, no. About there. That's what that's what we want. That's what we want. That's what we want. We get there in the end. Get there in the end. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, hello. <laughs> hello. Well, hello. This is goodbye, really, it is, isn't, isn't it? it? Yes. yes, yes. We've had a fabulous <sighs> day. Yes. yes. Didn't get rained on. Haven't been blown off. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Outtake. <laughs> no, it's going in. It's going in. <laughs> but we've oh, had a yeah. fabulous day and we're both gasping for a cup yeah. of tea. Yeah, we're going to go home, have a cup of tea. And Denise brought some lime and coconut cake, so nice. we're going with a bit of icing on top. It looks mm. very, very nice. So we're going to sit down and have that, and maybe we'll do a little bit more sketching. A little bit of tweaking. So we'll add that in as well. Yes, yes. So thank you for joining us. And don't forget to... 
I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll say it for you. She hasn't got a clue. I'm going to say, don't forget to dip into our conversation. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't have a laugh when we're doing these at all. <laughs>